Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. The fall is finally here in the Midwest. The weather is fantastic, 75 degrees and sunny, and Tally is delighted with it. She goes out sunbathing now in the afternoon. While she was napping in the sun, I did some yard work. I found these tulips from the big box store here, and I thought I'd give it a shot. I planted a rose bush in this area of my garden before, and unfortunately, I killed it two years ago. So now I'm growing 50 tulips here to fill in the space. Back to the studio. I'm throwing a couple of mugs here today for Halloween and Christmas. While you enjoy the throwing, here's some update on what I've been up to lately. Recently, I ran a full marathon. It was my first marathon since COVID and I trained hard through the summer. I frequently ran in the 100 degree heat with 90% plus humidity, which was brutal. So many times I wanted to back out of the training, but I gave myself some breaks. Some days I walked instead of running. In the end, I finished the marathon and surprisingly, I came in third place in my age group. So the moral to this story is never ever give up and always sign up for the smallest race possible so you can still place even though you're slow. <laughs> Starting this year, I wanted to try different methods to share my ceramics with others. I did art markets. I connected with a local boba tea shop to have a pop-up shop in their store every couple of months on a Saturday. I also tried consignment with a gallery, a local craft store, and even submitted my pieces online for exhibit selections. Of all the avenues I've taken, art markets are probably my favorite. As an introvert, I really didn't expect that I would like to go to art markets. Don't get me wrong, I still get drained from a whole day of doing markets and I have to recover the next day by speaking to no one for a while, but it's still a fulfilling feeling. It's one of my favorite ways to get my art out there. I love seeing people's faces when they approach my booth, and I love that my cute creatures I make would always put a smile on their faces.
I get asked sometimes about how I clean my home studio, considering I don't have a clay trap under the kitchen sink. Our local studio has a clay trap where you can dump all the muddy water, but the trap catches the clay and does not damage the sewer pipe. So here's how I clean my studio without a clay trap. I wash everything in this yellow basin I have on my throwing table. Then I dump the water into a two gallon bucket. I don't th throw with a lot of water, so I only need a two gallon bucket, but obviously you can get a five, ba five gallon bucket from Home Depot. I let it sit there overnight and in the morning the water and the clay would separate and I would pour out the clear water on top. Then I would recycle the clay that same day. I usually don't wait very long to recycle the clay because the clay will start smelling bad very quickly. Here are a few pieces I glazed and they're ready to go to the studio for a glaze fire. Another thing I'm working on now is learning how to make my own glaze. I took a glaze class from the ceramic materials workshop earlier this year and I finally got the courage to start testing some glazes. Here I'm making some testing tiles while I wait for the glaze chemicals to arrive. I'll put the online class link below. The class I took was called understanding glazes and the middle glazes which is cone six glaze i enjoyed the class very much but it was very technical and i forgot a lot of the the class so i'm now re-watching it to give myself a refresher Sometimes when I get tired of creating ceramics at home, I like to visit art museums and get inspired from famous artists around the world. My friend and I went to a fashion exhibit recently with lots of vintage dresses that significant people wore to significant events.
So that's it for this week. Hope you're enjoying your fall weather and thank you for stopping by and I'll see you next time.